What's going on everyone? AD here. Welcome back to more Kinshi Iron Man. If you didn't see the previous episode, we had a close call with our smugglers group that was heading from our hideouts in the desert all the way northwest over here to World's End. They got into some battles with the Yabuda Outlaws. Rolo unfortunately got butchered for meat by one of the Yabuda Outlaws. We weren't able to rescue Rolo in time, so it's unfortunate. Our first death in the Kinshi Iron Man play was our uh, pack beast Rolo uh, and our Garu friend. Unfortunately, we weren't able to rescue him, so uh, it's, a, it's a big shame there that we weren't able to do it. But uh, the, other, the other four members were able to continue on to World's End and, uh, and then make it all the way back down through Holy Nation territory into uh, Moonshine. So they had a, a couple close encounters. Really amazing episode there. Twerkinator has built us a clan hall over here where the inner, inner circle will convene and go over uh, anything of importance. They'll discuss the wars that are about to happen in the future and and make decisions uh, for the rest of the clan. So this is a really good spot. We'll be building this place out uh, some more as we acquire more blueprints for interior design. And uh, this is a good little meeting area and, and clan hall. And I will be doing other buildings uh, like that in the future. Uh, I, I have plans to extend Moonshine and give everybody their own kind of house and stuff like that um, over the course of uh, the next bunch of episodes. Uh, we also had Gus leave us. He's gone off on his own uh, to kind of find himself. You might see him again at some point in the future. I have to keep an eye out for him. Uh, we've got everybody else over here crafting. Amistine's working on her armor smithing with uh, Yeflin doing some leather. Uh, and Mr. Wolf as well working on blackened chain mails. We've got Apple over here cooking food. Uh, rice bowls for us. Stocking us up really well. Uh, Henry is just kind of sitting there waiting <laughs> for the next rice bowl to be put in so he can eat it. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, we're uh, slowly building up our base, and I think in this episode we'll probably, a little bit later, go out and explore maybe the, uh, uh, over here near Black Desert City, see what's going on, uh, visit some of these ruins that we didn't visit on the way through to the Great Desert, so that'll be really good. Maybe we'll find some ancient research uh, books, and maybe even some better weapons as well for some people. So if you guys want to see more Kenshi Iron Man in the future, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any new episodes. Hope you guys like the uh, cinematic stories that I've been doing with Kenshi. I've got a lot of ideas. I've got a lot more stories and backstories for a lot of different characters. A lot of cool things and exciting things to happen uh, in this series. We are just getting started, so I uh, hope you guys are excited for what's to come. And uh, just keep in mind that as I do these cinematic stuff um, and make things, it does make things more complicated and it also may take me a day extra to release uh, each episode depending on if there's cinematics or not. So, uh, you know, just keep in mind that quality is always my, uh, my number one priority and if I have to wait an extra day to release a Kinshi episode because it's going to have some epic cinematic stuff, then I'm going to do it. Um, because it's going to pertain to the story and, and the things that are going to unfold as we progress and uh, take on the Holy Nation and then some. So, um, I think, uh, let's see, I want to actually have, um, I want to have Bless get over here and make us some bows. I think it'd be pretty cool to get it, maybe Lee with a crossbow and uh, maybe some other people. I'm going to outfit uh, Night Fury, Cryo Assassin, and maybe Crazy. Yeah, I'm going to get everybody some ammo and uh, hook them up real quick. All right, I've got Twerkinator, Cryo Assassin, Crazy Lizard, and Night Fury all with uh, bolts. So now these guys are going to be able to use their crossbows again, thank goodness, um, because they've gone a few episodes without it. Um, I've got Blessed over here trying to make us some crossbows. Now, here's the thing with crossbows. I haven't done this before, but you got to make a couple different parts first. So, uh, you need actually steel springs. And then, um, which, which takes raw iron and copper to make a steel spring. Then you need crossbow parts, which takes uh, a hinge and then a steel spring. 
And then once you have... I think we have plenty of hinges up here. If I'm not mistaken, we have tons of those. Yeah, we built like... <laughs> we built so many hinges, we don't need any more of those. So, uh, then we need... Uh, once we have those, then we should be able to take the crossbow parts and the steel bars and make an old world bow MK2. So I want to get uh, Blessed over there making that as quick as possible. Yeah, it does look like Blessed is going over. Once he gets the raw iron, he'll come over and start making the uh, the steel spring. So I have him making... Uh, actually, I don't want to repeat the queue. Let me just go with like 5 and 5. Maybe something like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It shows you the ingredients. I don't know if it did that before, but uh, that's, that's a nice little addition. Okay, so anyway, he's going to go and make all that happen. We actually need... I probably should get somebody else over there doing the iron. Uh, who's over here not working? Crazy. Reacted. Alright, Reacted, you need to get over here on the uh, iron resource. Full time, my friend. Full time. And Crazy, you too, man. Get over here. You're not researching anything. We need a lot of iron, so let's just make as much as possible. And then we'll assign you guys to the uh, ore, uh, ore storage. Alright, so I think what I'm going to do is have Mr. Killer get off of his job for now. I'm not going to have him do any of his jobs anymore. And I'm just going to let these guys kind of stock up on raw iron and store it in the storage. We're going to need a lot of that for the crossbow stuff, and uh, it's kind of like breaking the production right now with Blessed not having enough raw iron, so... Uh, we're going to have to stop making iron plates for now. I think we finished everything over here, actually, in our new training area, so we could probably get some people training uh, soon. Hold on a second, though. We're getting attacked by hungry bandits. Okay, everybody, attack all here. <laughs> 143 damage by Eflin. Wow. Henry is up in the thick of it. Come on, Henry. Oh, yeah. I want to see the crossbows. Nice. Night Fury. Well done. We got fighting indoors, outdoors. This is great. <laughs> Everybody's just crawling around. <laughs> Lady Sharky, how hard could this be? No trouble. Ooh, Henry got knocked out. Alright. Nicely done. Go ahead and repair the gates. Close the gates. Henry, come back with that limb. There you go. Enjoy your treat inside. Mr. Killer with no words. He just stands silently, like the killer he is. But yeah, let's uh, let's see if we can stock up here on raw iron. Get back to work, guys. And I want to get some people training. Where's Lee at? Come here, Lee. Oh, Lee's up on the uh, the turret. We'll uh, unassign him for now. We've got to get uh, Lee training, and also Bless needs some training too. But uh, I want to keep Blessed working on these parts for right now. I'm going to assign Yeflin over here to making us advanced first aid kits. I'm going to stock us up here uh, with as many first aid kits as possible so we have uh, plenty for everyone. Alright, come along, Lee. Let's see. You can train your skill in turrets to up to 30 with these. That's amazing, but let's get you up here on the training dummy first of all. And you can get your max skill up to 15, your melee attack, so that's going to be really handy. Let's go ahead and do that. Get you training. Anybody else need training? I don't think so. Everybody else is... Ooh, Mr. Wolf only has... Mr. Wolf only has 11 melee attack? Yeah, it's fighting with swords. Okay. Huh, did he use swords before? I just never realized it. Well, hell, he can come up here and get his training if he wanted, but uh, we'll keep him on the armor smithing. So Spencer Killer isn't, uh, since he isn't doing anything, I'm going to have him training as well. We're going to get, uh, 
I guess we'll get him lock over here on the lock picking. There we go. Let's get him training on that. We're going to eventually get everybody training the lock picking up to 30. That'll really be helpful. All right, so I got uh, Cryo Assassin, Night Fury, and Mr. Killer up here working on their locksmith training. So that'll be good. And the lock picking. Lee will be doing his melee attack. Uh, we just got Lady Sharky down here doing the farming. But uh, we'll just have to swap people out as we need it and get everybody's uh, lock picking up. Apple's already at 44, uh, but we might be able to... Yeah, we can definitely get our assassination up. We're going to need some raw meat, however. I'm going to have my uh, Darth and myself come out here and we're going to try to get some raw meat. See if we can kill a beak thing or two out here somewhere. Shouldn't be too hard to find a few. Should we uh, take out a family of Garu? Yeah, why not? Take them out. Shouldn't be a problem for us. We should be able to do this. However, I have a different weapon. Uh, I gotta get my foreign saber back. Well, that was easy. Oh yeah, tons of raw meat. We take all of that. We got a lot of leathers. Oh, that was perfect. Okay, now we can go back in and get the assassination dummies built, I think. Unless we need something else. No, we just needed raw meat. We needed actually a lot of it. Hold on. Hold on. Four, eight. Oh, I, th I think we have enough. Nice. Let's get these assassination dummies built. It's fantastic. Uh, let's see. For thief training boxes, we're going to need a cup, a, a pearl vase, a pearl cup. I'm going to upgrade that just so that we get it to level 3. Tools, cup, pearl cup, pearl vase. Oh, wow. Can we even make that? Let me sh take a look at the robotics bench here. Well, that's interesting. I don't see anything that allows you to make that stuff. So we'll probably have to... I don't know, find that at some point. Or buy it from a bar or something. Alright, I finally got blessed over here making the Old World Bow MK2. This thing is going to take forever. Um, he's at 65 crossbow smith though. But yeah, it takes a lot of crossbow parts and a lot of steel bars. I've got myself over here working on making steel bars so that... We can at least get this done so that we can give this to somebody. Uh, I just want to see how well we can make a bow. I've got other people in here training. Cryo Assassin and Night Fury going to town over here with their assassination skill. Darth, Mr. Killer, and Torquinator working on their lock picking. And Lee is still going strong here. Almost at 15 melee attack, so he is slowly getting stronger over time here. Cryo Assassin and Night Fury often kept watch over Moonshine together. Being brothers, they were quite inseparable. They often talked about their passion for hunting and boasted to anyone who would listen about the biggest game they've taken down. Even though they were brothers, they enjoyed the friendly competition that hunting usually brought. For years, they've kept score, giving themselves points for taking down different sized game. Every so often, both of the brothers would hunt the beak things outside of Moonshine, keeping their ever-growing population in check. Cryo Assassin and Night Fury made a great team. Together, they felt like they could accomplish anything. Cryo Assassin grabbed Night Fury's shoulder one evening and said, You know, I've been thinking. For years we've taken down some of the biggest game around, but hunting just isn't the same anymore. I want a challenge. A real challenge. I think we should become bounty hunters. People are the ultimate game. They are unpredictable and dangerous, just as we are. Night Fury paused for a moment, pondering the proposal before speaking. Only if both of our scores are reset. Cryo Assassin grinned. Deal. After having said their goodbyes to their clan members, both brothers packed their bags and began to walk away from Moonshine. Aviticus, Mr. Killer, and Lee looked over the ramparts as they watched their friends disappear into the darkness. Magnus, wake up, his sister yelled. You're going to be late for your shift. 
Magnus's eyes began to open as he could see his sister, Kat, standing over him. I'm awake, he mumbled, rolling himself out of bed to greet her. Thanks for waking me up. I'll see you tonight. Magnus smacked his sister playfully on the shoulder, grabbed his sword, and headed out of the front door. Magnus and his sister lived in Blister Hill, the holy nation capital where the holy lord Phoenix resided. It was a busy city with traders trying to sell their wares on their way towards World's End and the neighboring cities. Magnus was a paladin, assigned as a gate guard at the city entrance. It wasn't the most respectable of jobs in the Holy Army, but it put food on the table. His sister Kat knitted quilts and sold them as a vendor in the market square. The day shift was long and strenuous, but he was never short of any action. Sometimes river rafters would get too close to the walls and Magnus would have to put them down. Other times Magnus was catching bandits or smugglers that were trying to sneak their goods into the city. The other paladins spoke of rumors going on in different parts of the land. There were rumors of a clan causing ruckus somewhere in the south, but he never learned more about them. As dusk quickly approached, it was Magnus's cue that his shift was over. His tired legs began to carry him the long walk home where he hoped to have a grog and pass out for the night. As Magnus made his way home, he couldn't help but notice how beautiful the city was at night. Every night he would pass the holy flames that never stopped burning. Some say it was a lord of light that kept them from burning out. They were one of the symbols of the city. Magnus arrived to an empty home. His sister should have been back by now. Cat, where are you? Magnus yelled as he searched the entire house. Books had been knocked over from the nightstand. There were signs of a struggle. Magnus reached out to one of his paladin friends and made inquiries into the whereabouts of his sister. He learned that his sister was a spy for the Flotsam ninjas and was caught providing one of their agents with intel. Cat was taken to Rebirth where she would work in the mines. No one ever returned from Rebirth, and Magnus knew that best of all. The next day, Magnus was granted an audience with the Holy Lord Phoenix and pleaded with him to free his sister. The Holy Lord Phoenix looked down upon Magnus with his beaming eyes. An unrestrained woman is an idle one. She must be subdued, lest she seduce and tempt the purity of man into the darkness with her. Through Okrin's divine flame, evil will be erased and cleansed. Your sister is evil, and she must be cleansed. Without another word, the Holy Lord Phoenix waved Magnus away. Magnus realized that the only way to free his sister was to rescue her himself. He didn't care that she was a flotsam spy. She was his sister, and they always looked out for one another. Even though he was a paladin, he wasn't a soldier assigned to rebirth. There was no way for him to get through the gates without sneaking through. Magnus traveled to the outskirts of Rebirth and began to case the area, looking for any possible signs of entry. After a few days of memorizing the guard timings, Magnus got close enough to see his sister. Kat was struggling to keep up with the demand that the paladins had on the slaves there. Magnus had to break her out of there, no matter the cost. Days turned to weeks and weeks to months as Magnus kept watch over his sister from a distance. He could tell she was getting weaker and weaker from the lack of food being fed to her. Magnus continued to spy on the guards, writing down notes of where they were located and memorizing when their shifts ended. With the information that Magnus collected, he began to piece it all together in his mind, coming up with a plan to rescue his sister. He had everything he needed to free her. As Magnus's shift was about to end, he began once more piecing together everything he had written, going over the entire plan in his head. Once Magnus committed to this plan, there was no going back. He and his sister would have to leave the Holy Nation for good. Betraying Okrin was the ultimate sin in the eyes of the Paladins, but it was a sin he was willing to commit. Magnus approached the Rebirth Gate and waited for the guard shift to change. As the guard shift was changing, Magnus noticed a body being carried out by a Paladin. It was his sister. Uncontrollable rage began to fill Magnus's veins as he sprung into action, engaging the paladin that carried his sister. Another paladin joined the fight, but he was no match for the madman standing before him. The paladins from the gate rushed in to join the fray and began to surrounding Magnus, slicing at him with every opportunity. The strength of a hundred men fueled Magnus's arms as he swung his paladin's cross like he was holding a toothpick. As the last paladin fell, Magnus roared uncontrollably, distraught at his sister's death. When Magnus gained his composure, he picked up his sister and began walking away from rebirth and the last thing he knew and loved. The city of Blister Hill could be seen in the distance as Magnus carried his sister's lifeless corpse 
out of the Holy Land. He would not have her buried in that cursed place. Magnus found a beautiful spot to lay his sister to rest, overlooking the valley of the Borderlands. It was the least he could do for his sister. After placing the last rock over Kat's grave, Magnus stood silent as the memories of his sister played back in his mind for the last time. He hoped she could at least find some peace here. Hatred began to set in. Magnus would have his revenge. A week later, on his way as far south as south goes, Magnus encountered someone along the road he was not expecting. A skeleton figure stood before him, limping his way towards him, as if he had just fought in a battle. The skeleton stared at Magnus as if he was looking into his soul. Without a word, the skeleton pulled out a piece of paper and handed it to him. Magnus took the paper and watched as the skeleton continued on his way towards the north. Magnus looked at the paper and saw a map with the name Moonshine written on it. The gates of Moonshine were heavily guarded, but Magnus decided to approach anyway. A beast of a hiver stood before him holding his hands around his blade, ready for action. Welcome to Moonshine, the hiver said. How did you find this place? Magnus mentioned that he came in contact with a skeleton who gave him a map. The hiver looked at his friends and blurted out, Gus! The hiver turned his attention back to Magnus. If Gus thought you were worthy, then you're welcome to join us. I am a Viticus dragon, and this is the Dragon Clan. As Magnus began to enter the gates, Viticus spoke once more. Just one more thing, we're at war with the Holy Nation. Magnus' eyes lit up as he gripped his sword. I am in the right place then. Cryo Assassin and Night Fury have left the clan to go and pursue their dream of bounty hunting, to get bounty hunting together out there in the wilderness. We'll see if they survive by themselves trying to take down uh, bounties out in the world. But they're going to be uh, away from the clan for a while to pursue their dream. We've gained a new clan member named Magnus who uh, under dire circumstances left the Holy Nation after uh, burying his sister and uh, running into our uh, friend Gus who gave him directions to Moonshine and... Uh, Magnus is going to join the clan. Welcome aboard, Magnus. Magnus is another one of my Patreon members. Um, we're going to have to get him some armor and equipment and get him training. With the rage that he had, he was able to take down a lot of Holy Nation soldiers to rescue his sister and uh, bring her out of the Holy Nation territory. So welcome aboard. Uh, enjoy your stay in the clan. All right, I went and decked out Magnus with uh, some new gear, assassin rags, drifter's leather boots, uh, leather turtleneck, and a cool mast helmet with the desert saber and a guardless katana. He looks pretty cool. I love the assassin rags. Uh, <laughs> they look really nice. And uh, I love that kind of helmet. I want to give everybody their like a, a special look so that we know who's who. Um, as I... Uh, Craft more weapons and, and armor and stuff will be able to give everybody a different kind of look uh, through the course of the episodes. But, uh, nice. So we got Magnus here. Let's get him in training. And, uh, see if he can work on his skills a bit. He's, uh, pretty bare bones. He's, he's got a lot of work to do. Get to work up here, Magnus. Uh, now that I think about it, we're going to need some lights. Let's go ahead and put some lights up here in the training area, because I can't see anything. Okay, Twerkinator, get off of the assassination dummy. I think you're done. Go for the engineering and uh, build us some of this stuff. Do we even have iron plates? Not really. Okay, let's get reacted wing over here on the ore drill. Get him off the iron resource. And, uh, yeah, make us some some iron plates. Oh, we got tin in here. Okay. I'm also going to build a couple light posts around the, uh, around Moonshine so that we can kind of light up the area a bit. Now, the other thing you guys have suggested is that I should, um, build a double gate. And the one, the one thing about double gates is that they cause AI problems, so I don't usually build go, uh, double gates. However... Uh, I might build a double gate just 
I'll leave this the first gate open and then close both of them when we're getting raids. So uh, I guess if you build a double gate, as long as you leave the uh, the second gate open, it shouldn't cause any problems. Like um, so, we'll try that and see. Let me uh, just build out a gate here and see if we can maybe give ourselves a little bit more protection when we get raids. So the only problem I see with this is that uh, the gate is going to be too far out for for our uh, tower to hit the uh, hit the enemies. Now I could extend the walls and then move the tower, but that's going to take way too long uh, for right now. So all right, I think I have it how I want it. So I've got it a gate out a little bit further, and then I've got the walls kind of like in a uh, triangle. Um, so this should work, and this should be pretty cool, actually. So then they'll have to break down, uh, break through this gate, then this gate. Now, the only question is whether or not our turret guys will be able to hit them, but if not, they still have a lot of way to travel to get to this gate. So either way, it should kind of, uh, kind of postpone them a bit, and maybe we'll be able to get a few more hits on them. Anyway, let's go ahead and build this and uh, check it out, see how it looks. Can always make adjustments later. We're getting attacked by red sabers. They must have been waiting outside while we dismantled our walls to, uh, to come in. They didn't really come with a very large army though, apparently. Alright, we got our gates uh, built. This is actually pretty freaking cool. It looks awesome. We're going to have to upgrade our walls. Um, for some reason... Oh, we were able to build a uh, defensive wall level 3. Doesn't look like we can upgrade defensive walls 2, though, for some reason. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, that is kind of a shame that we can't upgrade those, but... Uh, either way, at least we got the front upgraded. Let's take a look. How much health does the door have? Uh, the gate has 60, so it's about double uh, for door condition. So this is actually going to be pretty nice. And if we need to, we might actually have to build uh, some turrets up here or something somehow. It doesn't look like they're going to be able to, to get there, though. Well, we'll figure it out. Allied reinforcements have arrived. Well, welcome. Welcome, Maul. How you doing? We haven't seen you in a while. Uh, we're getting attacked by the Holy Nation. Holy crap, are they sending a, an entire army or what? Wrath of God. Oh, no. I didn't even see that notification. Uh-oh. This is bad news. Wow, looks like some of you guys got beat the hell up, too. All right, they're sending the wrath of God. Where's our uh, hounds, allies? This is not good, boys. All right, we're gonna have to um, get some scouting going on on these on this group. We're gonna have to see what's what's coming at us. All right, uh, Magnus, I guess just stay stay what you're doing here. Let's see how you doing on your training? Eleven and melee. Okay. Damn. We're gonna need Cryo and uh, Night Fury. Too bad they left us. <laughs> they lucked out. Oh boy, this could be the end. We got Flotsam leaving us here. You boys better stick around. All right, we're gonna need a scouting party ASAP. I guess Darth and I have have nominated ourselves since we're out front already. We gotta go see what's coming at us. Darth and I are getting attacked over here by a uh, red saber. Take this guy out. Oh, nice. Nicely done. Alright, let's take a look and see what's coming at us here. We're just a little bit further. Okay, uh... What do we got? Whoa! High Inquisitor Seda. 76 attack! 73... 74, 71... Oh, no. Oh man, 
Oh, wow. <laughs> Holy crap. Dude, they're sending a freaking... A, literally an army at after us. Holy crap. Dude, there's no way. Damn. What is that, three battalions? That's like six, seven inquisitors. Oh my god. Alright, we're gonna have to run. There's no way in hell we can do that. Yeah, I don't think there's any way we're gonna win this. Holy. That's at least like 60 guys. I don't even know how many. <laughs> Too many for us to take. Alright, we gotta get back to Moonshine and warn the others. Come on, Darth, quickly. Yeah, even with our flotsam allies, there's no way we're gonna win this. No freaking way. We're gonna need a double tower, I think. Holy. Alright, man, we're gonna have to abandon ship here. Alright, grab anything valuable and let's get out of here. I'm gonna make sure I take my stealth leg. I'm gonna take the power cores and CPU units so we can sell them for money. We've gotta get somebody stocked up on... Uh... Yeah, let's get Torquinator over here. Grab the uh, Hashish. And... Um... See, yeah, we're gonna try and sell all of that. Actually, we need somebody with a trader's backpack. Apple, get over here. All right, it's time for us to get out of here before the Holy Nation gets here. There's no way we can take them. Flotsam, I suggest you guys get the hell out of here too. Never mind. All right, if you want to stay and die, that's fine. She's got 80 attack. That's pretty good. But yeah, we're getting out of here. I have no idea what happens if you lose this battle. But uh, they are getting close. And I really don't want to see what's going to happen when... Uh, I really don't want to find out. So I've got everybody stocked up here. Uh, well, I grabbed a few things anyway. I got uh, some beds, uh, some rice bowls, and uh, we got a lot of hashish with apple. And we grabbed a ton of sake. So, yeah, I think we'll be good for a while. Our way north is cut off, so I think what we're going to do is head south back into United Cities territory. Maybe we'll do some slave trading. And, uh, it might be a good time since we've got our entire group with us. Where's Henry at? There we are. Um, well, maybe we'll, uh, you know, maybe assault the Manhunter base. Take them out, sell them to slaves themselves. So that could be kind of fun. It's kind of a shame we had to bail very quickly. I did get Lee a, uh, I gave him the Old World Bow that uh, Bless made and gave him a ninja blade so he's kind of decked out and also black plate jacket so that's pretty cool and since we're in force actually a good thing I want to one thing I want to do is maybe try to go into this crater too at some point uh, when we're down south since we got a lot of people we might be able to do it because uh, there's gonna be a lot of beak things and uh, we might be able to get through all right, see you later, Moonshine. We'll be back. We'll take our base back. Uh, Flotsam, good luck to you. However, we should probably see what Flotsam does. We'll see if they, uh, if the Holy Nation succeeds, or if Flotsam is able to repel them. I don't know. Not without us, that's for sure. But let's uh, let's watch from a distance and see what happens. Wrath of God has arrived at Moonshine. Oh, they're already inside. Oh, man. Jeez, Flotsam is getting destroyed here. <laughs> this guy's on the turret. Come on. Where's Maul? Is that her? No. Wow. Paladins are no joke. Oh, wow. This guy just lost his arm. This guy made it to the turret trying to knock out this paladin. Zero damage. Wow. 
That is the basic mounted crossbow, though. We're going to have to upgrade those. Yeah, I think we would have died a really bad death here. The The main army hasn't even arrived yet. This is just like the, uh, the preliminary force. And they've already wiped us out. Like, they already took out Flotsam, just that main group. Looks like uh, some hungry bandits have stumbled, stumbled upon us here. I'll oh, just attack all. Nice. Nicely done. Now that we got some archers in our group, this is going to be awesome. Yeah, we got Mr. Wolf kind of hiding over there. Just waiting to see what's going to happen here. Oh, there's the main army now. The main army has come in. Is that Maul there? That's Maul. Oh, the Maul is surrounded by an army. The Flotsam leader right there. I wonder what happens if they capture her or what. She might not live through this. I might have to rescue her. She's got one arm badly damaged. Wow. I can't believe she's taking all these guys on with one hand. <laughs> Oh, they've taken her down. Whoa, look at everybody go. Look at them flood through the gates. I don't think two gates is going to matter. All right, Mr. Wolf, now's your time, bro. Go for it. Get up, get Maul quickly. We gotta rescue Maul. Get out of there. Take her back to us. Yeah, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to uh, fight that mess. Wrath of God against Moonshine has ended. I'm kind of curious if they're going to leave. Hold on, let's just stay up here for a minute. See what happens. Alright, put them all down. And uh, let's heal her up. Wow, she was looting somebody's stuff, too. Should have finished me off when you had the chance. <laughs> well, I saved you. You're lucky. Thank you for that. Where is she going to go now? Yeah, I hope you don't go back to Moonshine. That place is filled with uh, paladins right now. Alright, let's take a look. Oh, Oh, wow. Where are they going now? They better not... Oh, they're... It got, looks like they're leaving. Alright. Let's just, uh... Stay up here for now. Maybe we can kill that Inquisitor when the, uh, the rest of the army leaves. Maul is going back to fight them. Are you kidding? Maul, you're crazy. Oh, man. She really wants to die. Wow, negative 82 chests now. Mr. Wolf, get out of there. Oh, dude, they're coming after us. Why are they coming this way? How do they know we're up here? Oh, God. Everybody run. Everybody run, quickly. Get out of here. Henry, where are you? Get over here. All right, we're going to have to hide in the swamps. I don't know. I think like they know where I am or something. I wonder if we can take out one of their groups. That would actually be pretty awesome. There's 16 paladins up here. 16 of them. We've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. 14 of us. These guys are about the same or better than us. I don't think we can take them. 
Honestly, I don't think we can. If we had Cryo Assassin and Night Fury, that might be enough to even, even the odds, but... I don't know, these guys are like following us around. They're kind of like hunting us down. Well, if this is going to be where the battle is going to be decided, we're going to fight right up here. What the hell? We might be able to take them. Alright, let's get everybody... Uh, let's see, Torquinator, take off your backpack. Yeflin, same deal. Alright, Apple. Okay, I think we're ready to go here. We've got our archers lined up. Alright, everybody go off of hold. Alright, where are these guys at? Right, they're down there. Let's get them. Ooh, they're in the water too. This is perfect. Crazy. Get a sniping position, Torquinator. And uh, Blessed, get over there. Yeah. Guess we have three archers right now. Alright, here we go. All three of you guys just go ranged. Shoot the hell out of this guy. Oh, he's down. Nice. Alright, shoot this guy. What do you mean you need a weapon, Torquinator? Oh. Alright, fine. Leave your backpack on. Or give me some bolts. Here we go. There you go. Alright, nice. Now, all three of you attack this guy. Take him out. Attack all, guys. Let's do it. Take them down. Alright, we got three or four down already. Alright, Blessed is down. Ooh, we got the high... Oh, You got the Inquisitor. Lee is taking them down... Uh, taking them on. Ooh, Magnus took down a, a Paladin. Apple and Yeflin double teaming a Paladin. Nice, Mr. Wolf from behind. Keep it up. Blessed is uh, kind of crippled. Reacted is down. Alright, it's just the Inquisitor. Well done, guys. Holy crap. Magnus is down. Nice jump kick. Come on, do some damage to him. Nicely done, Mr. Wolf. Good block, Apple. Ugh, Lee is down. Come on. How is this guy not... Just needs a couple more hits. There we go. Oh, was that an archer, was that an archer shot? Damn, look how many times we pegged him. <laughs> we got the high paladin now. This guy, oh. All right, bless. Get out of there, man. You can't take any more damage like that. Just heal yourself. All right, we losing anybody? Lee is okay for right now. Darth is down. Amistein is hurting. See, Yeflin hasn't taken much damage, so that's good. Here we go. Take these paladins down. Darth is back up. Nicely done. Mr. Wolf has a damaged arm in critical condition. Well done, guys. Heal up. You earned it. Kick the rest of their asses. Ugh. There you go, Torquinator and Crazy are pegging this guy with arrows. We are uh, with bolts, rather. I keep saying arrows. <laughs> Alright, nice. We took out one of the raiding parties. We're just going to kill all of these guys. 
Let him get up. Alright, let's see. Healing Amistine. Apple needs some healing. Mr. Killer almost lost, well, halfway through his right leg. And Magnus took a beating, but uh, he's gaining some, uh, some toughness. And same with Lee, so that's good. And Henry's alive! Alright, where's the Inquisitor? We should take his weapon. Give me that thing. Whoa, this guy's got a uh, Paladin's Heavy Hachigani. Oh, dude, I'm gonna take his... I wanna take his stuff. In case we need to do some uh, Holy Nation... Uh, some Holy Nation infiltration or something like that. We're gonna... We're gonna take this. Nice. Good job, guys. We survived. Alright. We're gonna head out. Oh, we gotta get Magnus. Lady Sharky, grab Magnus. What a bloodbath that was. I didn't think we were gonna make it, but we did. We, could, we took him down. We are stronger than I thought we were. But we definitely took a beating. Alright, we're gonna have to make it into the swamps. I'll probably have to splint everybody. What are these guys, eating the dead? Yeah, anyway. Try to get away from the, the paladins. It looks like they're kind of skirmishing with uh, the Flotsam allies, so... I don't know. We got a lot of groups still around Moonshine. Maybe they'll leave. If not, we're going to have to forcefully take back our base at some point. Well, we made it far enough away from the Holy Nation. We're out here in the swamps uh, near Greyflayer Village. I think this is a good resting spot to uh, get everybody healed up. So let's go ahead and have Darth put down a couple camping uh, camp beds. And uh, get those built. And yeah, let's put down the people knocked out and get them rested up. And uh, we'll continue to head south. We're gonna uh, probably do some stuff, uh, kind of war with the uh, Manhunters a bit, since uh, they've kind of been attacking us in the Great Desert a lot, so I think it'll be fun to uh, maybe try to enslave them a bit and sell them at the slave markets in the south. But uh, yeah, we're gonna go do some adventuring, maybe acquire some more ancient science books as well with the group. I think that'll be a lot of fun. I wish I remembered to take some extra limbs with me, but we didn't really have much time. Mr. Wolf, unfortunately, has uh, lost his arm. So now he is literally completely robotic um, once we get him a new limb. And he actually needs some better pants, too. I need to upgrade his pants because he's taking a lot of damage. But, uh, crap. Uh, he's going to be fully robotic. I really wish he could run back to Moonshine and grab that uh, really that really awesome robotic limb. I might actually have him do that because we have an industrial lifter left arm. Yeah, let me run back with him, see if we can run in real quick and grab it while everybody rests up over here. Doesn't look like there's anybody in our base anymore. It looks like they left. Oh well. All right, let's grab that robotic limb. I, built, I put them all up here in this storage chest. Yeah, industrial lifter arm left, plus three to unarmed damage. And yeah, we'll have to get him a right arm as well, but not bad, so that'll, that'll really help him out. That thing looks like a punching arm as well. It's got like a bigger fist. <laughs> All right, Mr. Wolf has made it back fully robotic. He's our first fully robotic man. Dude is pretty boss, though, with all those limbs. He's going to do a lot of martial arts damage now. All right, I think we've rested enough. Let's dismantle the camp beds and get out of here. 
but you'll have to see what's going to happen next time. Guys, I want to thank you for watching this episode. If you want to see more Kenshi Iron Man in the future, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you guys again next time. Take care.